Hey, my name is Thomas and welcome to another episode of Tom shoots Leica, Leica M6. But today Tom doesn't shoot the Leica, no, I'm shooting another alternative, a beautiful one. The Olympus OM-1. You can get 20 of these cameras with a 50mm lens for the price of this setup. So, is it 20 times worse? I doubt it, but let's have a go and find out. So we've got two beauties here, haven't we? Uh, this is of course the Leica M6 with a Summicron 50mm f2 from the 1990s and this one here, that's an Olympus OM-1 made from 1972 to 87, around 87 they sold them uh, with a matching 50mm f1.8 lens. And this camera, the Olympus, was designed to match the Leica, to be an alternative. The, design target was to make an SLR as small and as beautiful as the Leica M6. That's why I find it such a cool alternative. Today you can pick up a body of these with a 50mm lens for in a good condition around 150 euros or US dollars. Prices are very different. Sometimes you find it at a garage sale for even less. Um, they have one or two small issues I'm gonna tell you in a minute but overall it's really a steal. So as in the last video where I was comparing the Leica M6 to the Canon 5L, uh, I'm gonna do the same here. I shot both cameras, both with uh, Ilfa Delta 100 black and white film, a very fine grained high resolution film. And, and I'm gonna put the images that I shot with both cameras in this video. And one camera is gonna be camera A and the other one is gonna be camera B. So it's your guess which camera is which and in the very end of the video you can see the uh, solution. So both these cameras have a built-in light meter that's very handy. The Leica has a more modern one with a cool LED readout. Um, so you get these two arrows, the one pointing in that direction and in the other direction. And when both are lit up at the same intensity, then your exposure is right. In the Olympus, the readout is uh, more analog. There is a little black needle, plus and minus. Um, Actually, during daylight, I prefer that setup because you see the supple movements of the needle and you can slightly under or overexpose if you wish to do so. And one thing I can already say is the, the viewfinder of this camera is just amazing. You feel like you're inside of the scene almost. The Leica just, you're looking through a window. Everything is much smaller inside there. It's also cool, but this is a really immersive experience.
In your hand, this Olympus feels really small, compact and lightweight. In fact, the weight of this body is even a little bit less than the Leica M6. So Maitani, the guy who designed this camera, uh, really was successful in meeting the goal to create an SLR that's as compact and small and beautiful as the Leica. Uh, I mean, look at it, it looks beautiful. Uh, if you look at the details, it's maybe a little bit weird. It's got some plastic bits going on, some metal bits going on. Uh, every dial and every button on this camera has a slightly different design to the next dial or button. And you don't really know why. Uh, call it playful, maybe. Um, in operation, it's also a little bit unusual. Um, for example, this dial, this is not the shutter speed dial. This is the dial for the ISO and the shutter speed dial is around the lens. So it, you've got these two grips and you can read the shutter speed uh, from the top. And similar to the Leica M or any uh, rangefinder camera, the aperture ring of the lenses is in the front. All the other SLR systems, Nikon, Canon, whoever, Pentax, have the aperture ring at the rear and then the shutter dial up here. And uh, many people don't like the Olympus system, but I think this is one of the big, big advantages because you just hold it like this. Uh, you focus with the left hand, you adjust the shutter time, the aperture, everything with your left hand. It's super beautiful. The one downside is you don't have a readout for the shutter time in your viewfinder. So you can sort of guess when these two grips are at the same height, you're at the 30th of a second. And from there on, you kind of guess, okay, now I'm at 60th or 125th, but of course a real readout would have been better. Uh, apart from that, this is your on-off switch for the light meter. This is a 1972 design. They didn't have automatic switches, so you always have to keep in mind to switch it off after uh, using it. Otherwise, your battery will be dying very quickly. Uh, this is the self-timer. So in contrast to the Leica M6, we've got light meter and self-timer in the same body. Yeah. Um, and here goes your batteries. It only needs a battery for the light meter, nothing else. Um, and this thing here is for motor drive. I think Leica's also come with motor drives if you want to, but yeah, who's going to use them today? Uh, tripod socket here sits in the center, another advantage over the M6. And it feels great in your hand. It's a really cool and simple and easy camera to operate. So the Olympus has a cloth shutter, one over one thousandth of a second is the shortest time, one sixtieth is flash sync. It's exactly the same as with the Leica M6 uh, because it's got a simple opening back, easy film loading. It's not a Leica. I can show you the shutter. So uh, see, it travels uh, horizontally and that means it's kind of slow, but on the other hand, it's also pretty smooth. Shutter sound is also it has a beautiful sound to it. Lens selection, this is where uh, Olympus has some downside because when you're buying an Olympus SLR camera, you also 
have to buy Olympus lenses. Yes, you can have some old Sigma and Tamron glass, but back then that wasn't the most exciting alternatives. If you buy a Nikon, for example, you can also opt for modern size glass. And also the Nikon lenses themselves, they were continually developed throughout the 60s, 70s, 80s, even in the 90s and beyond. Whereas Olympus, they sort of designed one set of lenses in the early 70s and then very, very few editions came in the 1980s. All of those are ultra expensive today, uh, collector items. So basically, if you buy an Olympus to shoot it, you're locked in buying 1970s glass. Um, if you like that sort of glass, like I do, that's not really a problem. And a set of 50 mil, 28 mil, 135 mil lenses can be had for way less than 200 euros, all three of them, and it's quality glass. But if you're looking for special stuff, even an 85 mil F2 is already very, very rare and expensive today. So beware, if you decide for Olympus, look first, what's your needs in lenses, and, and will this system make you lucky? One uh, small fun fact, uh, I like my Olympus O1 so much that I've already got a second one. So I can shoot two different films at the same time or two different lenses or whatever. I mean, who's going to have two or three Leica M6s? That's <laughs> not a big problem. You know, there is this thing going on between Porsche drivers and Ferrari drivers. And the story is that everyone who owns a Porsche will tell you this is the best sports car you can ever own. Uh, I never need a Ferrari. And then the Ferrari driver will show up and say, yeah, you're just not right. I know that you're every night when you go to sleep, you will dream of owning a Ferrari. And uh, the same goes maybe for these things. So. I'm telling you, this is the better camera than the Leica and I really believe it. But of course, when I go and have a nightmare, I always end up, shit, I don't have a Leica, I need a Leica. So it is a dream of a camera, you cannot deny that. Keep that in mind. Maybe if you've got the money, just go for the Leica, forget about all these videos. But then I still tell you, get also an Olympus to just go out and shoot and enjoy it as well. Time for the verdict, and this time it's really, really hard. I mean, we're talking 4,000 euro investment, 200 euro camera, and we're talking rangefinder, maybe the best rangefinder there was, uh, and beautiful SLR also with one of the best viewfinders there ever was. Um, I know the heritage of that camera, but frankly, if you ask me, uh, just a shooter, a companion, I would always go for the SLR camera, but I am an SLR guy. I love, you can focus much closer. You have a big, bigger range of lenses that you can select. For example, macro lenses or something. Yeah, try a macro with a Leica, no. Uh, maybe you don't need it today, but going close just sometimes like, this close instead of 0.7 meters is also a great advantage. And the Olympus can do it all. And uh, people say SLRs are loud and clunky. No, the Olympus isn't clunky. It has a beautiful soft uh, shutter sound. Uh, mirror slap isn't so bad. Everything that people criticize on SLR cameras is not so bad with the Olympus. Uh, people also criticize it has a slow shutter, but <laughs> the Leica is the same. So in that regard, there's also no disadvantage. The only thing where you do see sometimes a slight difference is, yes, 
image quality. If you're using super fine grained film, Ilfa Delta 100 or Kodak T-Max 100 or Ekta, then yes, uh, Leica images can be more sharp if you're using the modern glass. And talking about that, the lens selection for Leica is big these days. You've got the original Leica glass from the 50s, 60s, 70s up to today. Uh, insanely expensive a spherical glass that's perfect in whatever respect, but also 8,000 euro for a 50 mil lens. But you've also got size, you've got Folklander, you've got Seven Artisan, TT Artisan, all that. Uh, you don't have that sort of selection for the Olympus. So keep that in mind when deciding. But again, I think even if you own a Leica already and you love it, just get an Olympus as a second camera and you will see how cool it is. So overall, my verdict is this is the more versatile, more cool camera, and this is still the legend that everything, everyone is lusting after. So, time to reveal the two cameras. Camera A was the Olympus OM-1 with the 1970s 50mm f1.5, and camera B was the Leica M6 with a beautiful Summicon 50mm f2 from the 1990s. Maybe you do see a subtle difference. Uh, of course, it only has to do with the lenses because remember, the camera is just a holder for the film, nothing else. Um, and as I said before, Leica lenses can be much better than vintage SLR glass if you're using modern Leica lenses, like I did here, 1990s 50mm lens. A little bit more contrast, a bit sharper at open apertures. You have to look closely to see the difference because the Olympus also does such a great job. So that's it for today. I hope you liked this episode, found it useful and interesting. If you did so, then please leave a like, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so yet. Hit the small bell button for notifications whenever I upload my next video. And in case you've got any questions or comments about Leica, Olympus or any other alternative camera, uh, just write something in the comment section below. I love to read all your comments and I will happily answer every single one of them. So. Have a great time, live long and prosper, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.